What's up guys, I'm BTC, there's a brand new map on the PTR called Paris, but is it any good? Today, we're gonna find out. Joining me today is Skillcapped, he's a top 500 player. During the initial release of the game, he was the number one McCree and Soldier player in the world. And more recently, he's been a coach for a playoff contenders team. We're gonna go through this map and point out all the things that are good, the things that are bad, what the best heroes to use, and the best comp. Let's get started. We're gonna start in the attacker spawn, so... Lots of destructibles, always a good thing for the attacker spawn, though. Oh, they made it so that you can't destroy the tables. That's just a, a patch that you just did on the PTR. They removed some of the fun in the spawn. Already this map is terrible. What are they doing? All right, so the first thing that I just want to quickly get out of the way is the map looks really cool. So the art looks really nice, the structures, all that sort of stuff. I think it's a very good looking map. The problem is with the layout and the design of where the stuff is actually placed. So would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, again, from an artistic point of view, yeah, it's, it's amazing. But if you actually look at the way that everything's set up, it doesn't quite make any sense. In my opinion, this is probably one of the worst maps to date. So the first thing we're going to notice when we come out of the spawn room here is you have complete cover from any of the defenders. Like, never will you be attacked when you're up here. In fact, there's a strategy that a lot of Reinhardts do and, and other characters as well. When the attackers are leaving their spawn room, you're going to hit them with a fire strike or something. It gives you some really quick charge, but the way this map is designed, you really don't have that. I think the best possible would be to stand right here, but there's no guarantee because you're trying to hit one door and like they're going to be coming out the others. I, I don't know. It just makes it a little difficult. So right out of the gate, your defending Reinhardt is going to have less of an ult charge than than he normally would in other maps. So it's not a massive thing, but it's, it is just something to, to take into consideration. But for the most part, the attackers have absolutely no problem running from there all the way to the first choke point with absolutely no damage whatsoever. There's just no line of sights for anything in order to hit them. So once you get here though, then this is a problem. So talk about this little choke point a bit. Sure. So. This is a forced choke point, and it's very, very, very narrow. So um, there's one other way to get to this area, and that's just by uh, flying around. So it's going to be Hammond, Winston, or uh, all the characters that can use mobility to get around. Now, for this map, it looks like everything is focused around goats because it, is, it can deal with that close quarters, but it also can deal with a lot of the other problems. Uh, for example, Para because of the sky box. So the sky boxes are pretty low. Um, so what you're gonna have is Farah has an issue on this map in particular, again, because of the, the way the buildings are placed and also because of the sky box. So, and uh, just the way that like things are angled, Widowmaker won't get a lot of value here. So it's just gonna be GOAT. So the problem with this is that the defending side has an advantage in GOAT um, because they can place, for example, their Reinhardt where I'm throwing my rockets now and the rest of the team can spread out in different areas around that so they don't take swing damage from the, the cleave like Rager Ryan. But the enemy team must go through that narrow little passage. So what you're gonna have is the defending team gets extra cleave damage and they don't take any. Um, and apart from that, there's no other way on the point, uh, which means that you're either gonna have to win a goats versus goats setup or you're going to have to run a character like Sombra that can uh, flank and take the, the point, contest point, and force the enemy GOAT's team to go back to contest. And that opens opportunities for you as an attacker. <laughs> and there's a really good spot. The way that the... They're probably going to have to move these. They're either going to have to get rid of them or move them, I think. Because if this is, like, right about here, if that is probably the optimal spot to defend, or even if it's, you know, somewhere down here, uh, these two, I don't know what they are, advertisement <laughs> things, whatever, um, sale, ticket sales things. If you have the Sombra who comes over here, they can decloak right here, and they'll have complete cover from all of the defenders who are up there or down there or whatever. 
They have complete cover. The Sombra can just sit here and capture the point without taking any damage whatsoever. And it's going to force all of the defenders, or at least several of the defenders, to break off from defending the point and then just come over here and uh, deal with the Sombra. And of course, they're not going to get her. She's just going to teleport out no problem. Uh, there is another thing that she can hack right here, which is a, a Mega. This overlooks the capture point. It's not quite as good as the one on the first point of Volskaya, because that one has, like, perfect line of sight. So I, I don't think that this is going to be, like, an unbelievably powerful thing, but it's certainly something that, if you hack it, whether you're on defending or attacking, I think it's definitely going to have some good usage there. But, yeah, I, I don't know, like... What are you going to do? I think there's another strategy that you could do with um, Symmetra. Because of the way this whole thing is lined up, imagine you have your entire team and they have a Lucio with a Symmetra, right? You can come along this entire right-hand side and you will never once show yourself to the enemy at all. They will. You can come out through this door right here, which again, this is why the whole Rhine Fire Strike thing at the beginning is not very good. Because if they don't want to take a hit, then they just go through that door. So that's kind of the lesson. You should never leave through that door. You should always leave through that door. But anyway, so you have your Symmetra Lucio comp and you come around this way. They have no line of sight to you. They have absolutely no idea that you're here. They have no idea what the team comp is going to be unless they have a character like a Sombra or something that's scouting up ahead. You can come over here. Again, they have no idea what you are. Maybe right now the Reinhardt sees you, but you can drop that telly and put it over here. And then you can try to speed boost your way through here and just go to the point. But even then, like, I, I don't know, like, the defenders, the choke, want, put it this way. Once people figure out that people are trying to do that strategy with the teleporter, then what is going to end up happening is they're just going to defend slightly further back, I think. So they're like, oh yeah, you have the teleporter, you put it up. And then now rather than holding you at this choke point, they're just going to hold you at this door, which is even smaller. So it might work for a team that's not prepared, but like any cheese strategy, after you've done it a couple of times, people are going to get aware of it and they're going to know how to counter it and they're going to expect it. So it's not like it'll work a little bit at first, but then it's it's going to be kind of shut down. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, for the most part, you might see some Symmetra play initially. I think it's going to die off because it doesn't add that much um, in terms of efficiency for actually winning the fight. Yeah, you can get through, but if somebody gets caught off guard or like I had an issue with a team where one of my players didn't find the used teleport button, so that was an issue. But um, apart from, from the initial... Uh, just confusion through the teleport. I think what you're going to see for the most part is goats and Sombra. And just to touch up on the, the health tank idea event here, um, even if they do send, for example, a, a character that you would normally send to come contest would be D.Va, for example. Well, if you come in this room and hack this mega, all of a sudden, maybe D.Va isn't that big of a threat to you. Right? So they're going to have to send multiple people uh, even so. I, I think... Sombra will be a big player here on the first point. Now, uh, another thing I want to quickly mention about this first point is, and, and, and you briefly touched on this, these buildings on this side seem to be completely and utterly worthless. Like, there is almost no reason for an attacking team to go up and to use any of those buildings on that side over there. I think it just, like, while you're... So let's get rid of some of these fences here. So let's assume that the defenders are right here, or maybe they're even right here. If you're trying to run as the attackers and you're going up on that left side over there, like along that, like you're just in a shooting gallery. Like that's all it is. Like they're just gonna, they're gonna get free hits on you. And I just don't see any point to having that stuff. I mean, I know that the, the, the attacker second spawn is in there. So they kind of had to dress this up a little bit, but from a taking the first point perspective, this whole area just seems completely worthless. Yeah, it, it's it adds um, it adds unnecessary risk as well. If your whole team, now you're gonna be playing together, obviously. If your whole team goes up through the stair and does the entire trek through this gauntlet, what's gonna happen is the enemy team sees you while you're doing this. They're gonna send 
Diva, Lucio, wins anybody with a boop, they're gonna send you so that they can split uh, your team. You know, maybe they knock some of your players down onto the ground and the rest stay up, right? There's a there's a level of confusion that's added there, communication that maybe you're not prepared for on the attack team. Um, so I, the best thing to do would just be to go main. It solves all of those problems. Again, this is just another map with a bunch of extra buildings that don't quite make sense. Going a little bit further about that, the the low collision on the ceiling here, like it is actually really bad. Like this building, it looks like you can get over it, but you can't. And this is gonna be really frustrating for a Farah, for a Hammond. And also you might think that maybe Widowmaker could use it in order to peek above and to get, you know, like a free hit on the defenders, but that's just not the case because when you grapple up there, you end up hitting the the top of the ceiling, that invisible ceiling, and you just don't have an angle that allows you to get any hits. Plus you don't really have, you only have like a fraction of a second in order to use it anyways. But the other really big thing, like to, to show just how bad this low ceiling is, a Zarya can hit a Farah who's at max height. So like right now, Skill has infinite of the hover jets, and I can hit him with Zarya from the ground. That is really, really bad. Like, who needs a hit scan when your Zarya can hit the Farah, even when she's at the maximum height for the entire map? Like, that's just that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and that just further amplifies the strength that Goats has. Goats has an issue dealing with Farah, for instance. Well, now they have an easy solution to that in the form of the, uh, the low uh, collision here with the uh, skybox. One last thing I want to mention about this first capture point. On a previous version of the PTR, you would be able to go around this building and you could kind of like walk along the edge. That has been removed. So you can't walk over here anymore. You just slide right off. Now, the thing is, that little flank wasn't all that great to begin with. It was kind of like something you could use maybe once every 100 times and it might do something. Like it might be a little bit of a surprise. But the thing is, it's so obvious that people are gonna expect it. And like really, you don't even need a boop character. You could just have any character with any sort of minor kind of splash and you would just knock them off. Like even a soldier with a helix rocket would knock someone right off of this. So it wasn't that useful to begin with. And I really don't understand why they went ahead and removed it. It just doesn't make any sense. Like it, it had minimal value and you're removing it anyways. I just don't get it. This first capture point I would say is heavily favored for the defenders. The second capture point is much more favored for the attackers. So the difference between the Paris second capture point and some of the other two capture point maps is that on the Paris map, you have full access to the second capture point from the center, the left, and the right. If you look at other maps like Hanamura or Anubis, for example, there's limited access to that capture point. For Anubis, you can go up center, you can go left, you can go right, but it's kind of blocked off. And the same thing for Hanamura, you can go center, you can go right, but if you want to go left, you have to have some sort of movement abilities, and generally that's kind of the case. But with this map, it is completely wide open. There's really no good spot for the defenders to, to defend on the capture point itself. If you try to defend on the left, well, then they just come from the left. If you try to defend on the right, then they can come up from behind you. So really, you have this one spot right here, but even then, like if you're trying to hold this spot, get rid of some of this stuff here, if you're trying to hold this spot, then they have so much of the actual environment blocking any of your damage. So when they're running through that room or on the, on the other side, they're running through the rooms, like you're not going to be able to hit them until they're practically right on top of you. And that's really bad. So defending the capture point itself probably isn't a good idea. So skill, where should they be defending? Sure, so just to go ahead and uh, put some more information regarding the uh, this room in particular. Like you said, there is a lot of potential for spreading out. So maybe if they want to change a composition from what would be standard nowadays with goats, they can run multiple other compositions like quad, for example, quad DPS. And they can take different angles, and so 
you're just going to be hit from every angle and eventually you're going to lose the point. So for the defending team, their job is to leave this room entirely. They want to go back into the courtyard because they're at a disadvantage here. So their entire time, they're going to be struggling. But if they manage to successfully hold, they want to actually come back out and push into the courtyard so that they can swing it more into a favorable position for them. They want to force the enemy team to come through these two chokes. Because if they come down the stairs, then you have multiple angles to move them off the map with. And if they come through choke, well, it's a choke point. You're in an advantage there. So, um, yeah, so the, the entire time the defending team wants to leave that room. Meanwhile, the attacking team wants to be in there as often as possible. Which is the opposite of pretty much any other two capture point map. Where you would generally, like for Anubis or Hanamura or something, you know, uh, for Anubis, you're going to hold that choke point. You might be a little bit further back. Uh, for Hanamura, you might want to hold high ground or something. But on this one, like, you don't even want to be in this area. It's, it's just too big. So if, if you try to hold one side, then they can either, you know, just go to the other side and completely avoid you. I mean, look at the, the space here. Like, if they're trying to hold right uh, the right side over there, then, like... The attackers can come over here. That is a very, very long distance. There's no way you're going to be able to do anything. Now, you could try to hold the center, but even this, like, there's a lot of distance. So the enemies, the attackers, could just run in right past you. Like, if you're holding right here, the, the attackers could just run right past you, go all the way around. You have no way of hitting them. They could actually go up and around and then come out through that side and just come out the back right there. So, like, this whole area is just a nightmare for the defenders to, to try to hold, but... Yeah, and so the, the only thing that makes sense that's efficient is just to hold in the center of the point. But again, if they run something maybe a little bit off-meta that isn't GOATS, they can spread out and take multiple angles, and there's your problem. So, yeah, the, the, if you're forced into this room, you must play in the center, or you're going to get back capped. Well, the, and the, um, the other thing is, is like, uh, to, to add to that... So if you're trying to defend and you are holding here, then they can have, you know, a junk rat going up on the left-hand side there and just spamming you. They can have uh, someone else coming up on the, the right-hand side. They send a couple flankers like a, a Tracer or a Genji or something to go around this side. So while you're trying to deal with this side, you know, you have one or two DPS over here. They're going to have one or two DPS up there. And you're just going to get caught in the middle and just absolutely destroyed. Yeah, that's correct. So that's why defense doesn't want to be in here. They want to be outside as much. All right, so defending out here, what do you think is the optimal position to try to defend out here? Would you stay on this side for the potential to just quickly go over and, and get the boops? Or would you want to stay over there a little bit more? So the, the thing that makes most sense is to stand right around where I am. And uh, this way you can cover both angles. If they go right, well, you have quick access to the stairs. If they go left, well, then you're right hard. Whatever you're running, so right up here so that nothing can get through. Um, and, and people forget that you can body block here as well because it is narrow enough. So your, your tanks can just stay here indefinitely and not have to worry about protecting what else in the back line just by using the body. So, yeah, holding this general area is probably a good idea, as well as there is a mini health tank here um, as well. So everything is positioned here perfectly for the defensive team. The problem is setting up here in the first place. So what would end up happening is, is you probably you lose the first capture point. And yeah, so due depending, to the momentum... Depending on depending on the results of the first capture point, so if, if they just annihilate your entire team and they are you know uh, they only have one or two that are capturing the point um then you're probably going to have enough time as the defenders to regroup and to come out here but if they steamroll and they have like five or six people that are ready then they can start pushing forward the attackers they can leave one or two on the, the point to capture it and have the other ones come up here and start contesting this so to prevent the defenders from from getting grouped up and set up here yeah so just the way the map is set up, defense does have uh, an advantage on first point, which means that 
more than likely, if you took first point as the attack, it's likely because you steamrolled them with ultimates, which means that as the defending team is respawning, the attacking team is already System pushing repaired. out and they're already inside um, the room with the capture point itself, inside the, the actual building. You wouldn't have time to set up in the courtyard as the defending team. Um, but because this is so favorable for the defending team, if you manage to survive that initial push, um, then you would want to come out here as quickly as possible. All right, so let's talk some changes. What would you change to the map? I, I know the first thing is I think the, the ceiling needs to be drastically increased. It's just way, way too low. <laughs> yeah, I think to, to add a little bit more dynamic to it, I, I would um, take out this entire uh, section here of this map and I would open it up. Just remove this entirely. Uh, you can leave the, the center building here itself, but just remove that. Um, that would open a lot more opportunities because right now this is going to force uh, goats, uh, sombra, or some kind of variation of a spam composition. Um, but that has its own up and down. So that's the first thing that I would change here, as well as for um, the last point, I would. I don't want to say that I wouldn't change anything, but it. it the dynamics that are that are made here, I think, uh, it, it, if you actually raise the ceiling of the map itself, a lot of things will sort itself out. Uh, the problem is that it, the map forces you to play a very specific composition um, and play a very specific way, and it doesn't really allow for any changes. I want to point it, out that it, I'm it's not really actually, unfun. <laughs> I want to point out that I'm not actually controlling my character. This is not a flat surface that you can move on. This is a, uh, a, a slanted surface, so you can't actually have a Widowmaker or a Hanzo up here because they're just going to slide off. I don't know why they decided to do that. It makes no sense. Like all of this up here, this is all uh, slidable surface. It's just it's weird because it's <laughs> it looks weird, but you can't actually position up there. Um, I, I'm not really sure what they could do to the second point without drastically changing it it just seems like it's such a detriment to the defenders to actually try to defend the point where they should be trying to defend that choke up there so i don't know like maybe they could close off one of these doors or or something just to make it so that uh like there's a little bit more of a defensible stuff on this side. I think uh, I think an interesting change would be uh, come around to the front of the building. I, I think uh, if they actually reduce the the length of the rooms itself, and they actually block and cover up this entire front section, that way it only forces two sections on either side. Um, so that would make it more interesting because the attacking team choose a path that they will that they're willing to take and they're they're they'd have to focus everything into there because you know that the, that a defensive team would put all their pieces to one side as well so uh, I, I think that would be an interesting dynamic by forcing teams to take one or the other and not knowing um, what's waiting on the other side whether it's going to be free or if the enemy is going to be waiting for you there um, because as it stands right now yeah um, the defensive team is at a disadvantage here like yes they do have close spawns but if you're just close spawning and dying one by one and not able to make any progress, well, you're gonna eventually going to lose. So uh, it, it, it kind of sucks because this is one of the first times where a defensive team doesn't actually want to hold where the point is. They actually want to hold way off in another segment of the map. I think something interesting that they could possibly do here is instead of just putting like a full wall, they could have a, a gate of some sort that you can see through it but you can't uh, attack through it. So like if- That would be interesting as if well. If the enemy, you know, if the enemy is running up through the middle and then you suddenly see them shift to the left, then the defenders can, can compensate for that. Now it does, now if they're trying to run a more stationary comp with like a Bastion or a Torbjorn or something, it's gonna take a little bit more work to, to, to change. But to just kind of give the team the idea of, you know, which direction. But even then, I mean, the thing is, you can avoid that by simply going into the left door or going into the right door altogether. So, I, I, I don't know. Like, the, I think the first point definitely has some serious issues to it. 
And the other thing is that this area right here is also slidable. So just like that other spot, like you can't stay up here. So that means that a Widowmaker, a Hanzo, or whoever, they, they can't reposition themselves up here in order to try to help break the choke. Something that you can do on a lot of the other maps, right? Where you can go up to the side and provide a little bit of flanking pressure, but you just can't do that. So, uh, like, I don't know, man. There's, there's lots of problems with that. I still can't get over the, the tables being non-destructible like they went out of their way to make the spawn room less fun i, I don't get that yeah I, that, that seems to be a trend nowadays but my biggest issue with this map in particular is it it feels like you're on a theme park ride you're on a roller coaster and there's nothing that you can do but take the intended path there's there's nothing there there's nothing fun or interesting that you can do you're kind of like all right let's just go through the choke like we're supposed to and then go into the point take that all right hopefully we get through the gate just fine and then on the point there's no like all these buildings are here but they serve no purpose even up towards the spawn there's a lot of health packs and buildings but again it doesn't quite make any sense um if you're trying to win at least set up there or do anything like that um, as the defense even like on some maps it's interesting to take a, an up close defense uh, but on a map like this, like you, you can't take those risks because if you lose, if you lose that initial fight, you're probably going to lose the point as well. So it, it just feels very, it's very forced. It, everything feels like you must do it a particular way, or you're going to lose. Another thing I want to point out here is this, this area over here on the right. Now I understand the whole point is to give another flanking option, but why would you ever use it? I guess is the question. Like. Yeah, it doesn't quite make sense because again, like, okay, if if there was an opening here, for instance, that went to that room, all right, that makes sense. Gives you another opportunity to, to get through. But you have to get through this choke first, and then then go to the right. So it's like this room. yeah, yeah. So the the yeah, exactly. So the the point I'm trying to make here is if you can break the choke, there's no point in going to the right. If you break the choke, you already won this fight and you just go straight to the point. Like there's no reason, there's no reason to go around it when like the the hard part is already done. Like you've already broken the choke. The hard part is already done. So just go straight to the point. Like yeah, it, I don't know. I, I think I think there definitely should be another another passageway on this side. Uh, I think you're right. They should probably just get rid of this building here. They need to do something about this building. They either need to increase the height of it just so you can't get over it. Because this is just frustrating to look at right here. So they either need to increase the height of this building. Or I think optimally I would decrease the height of the building. So that it allows you know, uh, other characters to get up on top of it and stuff. Like Widowmaker and, and Hanzo and whatnot to provide that pressure. Yeah, and see, even like... Let's say that you do decide, that, all right, we're going to run a full dive composition and we're just going to fly over this building here and just go over the choke. Well, the thing is that you're using all of your dive abilities to get over the choke. Meanwhile, goats is set up right next to you. They haven't used any of their resources, so they're just going to beat you, right? So, like, it, there's a bunch of things that could happen if this building wasn't here. It opens up so many different avenues. But again, like everything just feels so forced. You're, like you're required to do certain things, and One no matter how you spin it, defense One has an advantage shot. for the first point. It's even like it's a stronger defense than I can walk to be sure. So like I want to show something here too because it's actually like if you're using a Widowmaker. So in order to get over that, remember it's a it's a slanted roof, so you're gonna slide. So you would need to. Like, how would I even get over there? You would have to hook, like, no, hook, up there. Hook onto that, maybe? Hook onto... I can't even... It's not even hitting it. It's not even hitting it. There we go. So, hook up there, and then you can slide down. But now I'm on the low ground. Like, this... I'm just yeah, dead. See, the problem I'm is that instantly you just over. Yeah, you're, they're just going to run into you. What can you do? You can't... You just use your escape to get over. And that's the same for dive. Genji just... Either climbed over or dashed over. Tracer can't even get through. Uh, Sombra can maybe TP over or walk through with stealth. Winston's gonna have to leap over with no escape and less damage. It's it it's not suited for. I don't know why that's there to be honest. 
I don't even know even if Hanzo see can get where over the it. defense is going to want to hold. Like, the fence is going to either hold up close or on the, the main platform honor, itself. You can't even damage. see that from the angle that you actually peek over. Like, can Hanzo even realistically climb over that? No, he's going to have to no, jump, right? Can't. But even Hanzo it's not even good that. enough. <laughs> it's not good enough. He's... Oh, okay. Well, all yeah. right, but you just had to use your jump to get over. Yeah. Let me see. So I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to. Uh... So yeah, Hanzo can get over that. You have it's just to use. Iffy. You use your wall jump and then dash. And if you dash at the right time, you can just get enough momentum to slide over it. But again, you're in the same problem. You're now on the low ground. Like you're you're With not no just escape. Yeah, yeah, you're it's it's not just that you you slide off, it's you're on the very low ground. Like you're on the absolute bottom. So if the attackers are up on there, you're still at you're at even yeah. more of a disadvantage because they have high ground on you and you just went over a building. So Yeah, you know, and Hanzo know. has an even worse time because he has to actually slide down the building itself. He's he, it's not like he flew over and just lands. He has to slide down really slowly so it, you know, the enemy team is just going to sit under you and wait for you to come down. They're going to catch you as you fall. All right, so final verdict about this map. Zero out of five. <laughs> I, I think it, it's it's very pretty, but uh, I don't think anybody's going to want to play this map. And if they do, they're going to want to start out hopefully as a defense because... I don't understand why you would play this over any of the other maps as well. There's there's huge, clear advantages and disadvantages here that aren't shown on any of the other maps, for example. And there's more uh, potential on the other maps for different compositions and things like that. But this, for at least as far as I can see right now, as far as efficiency goes, you're very limited in what you're allowed to do now. So unless Blizzard has a lot of upcoming changes to the rosters or new characters or whatever it might be it looks like you're gonna have to run goats guys and sombra for a large majority of the map all right well thanks very much and hopefully some of this stuff does actually get changed before it gets pushed to live the maps tend to be on the ptr for a little bit longer but i'm not sure how much they're going to be willing to make like large-scale adjustments to like the structures and all that sort of stuff so i guess we'll wait and see so thanks thanks a lot for coming by and helping me out with the uh, the analysis of the map not a problem thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything also come hang out in my discord server and my twitch live stream Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.